Hey everyone, here I am in my home office, I'm editing things, and uh, the video that you're about to see, this video, is actually one video behind. I don't know how the hell I did that. I have a really good naming scheme and everything, but somehow I screwed up, I managed to, I built this entire video, stuck it in the folder, and then never uploaded it. So y'all didn't get to see it. Well, here it is. Sorry about that. I'll have another one here soon. Thanks. All right, here we are back out in the hangar working on all the things again. And as I stated before, the first thing I have to go through is make sure I know where the hell I left off. And so that's reading the plans and um, got to go over there and get some parts. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I saw was happening online um, in a number of different places. And I thought was spreading a little bit of misinformation and that's specifically around tooling. Uh, what tools you need to build one of these things, right? You're gonna need stuff. Well, I found that a lot of times people were saying you must have a list of stuff that I just don't agree with. Um, I often wonder where some of these people get their information. So first of all, I'm gonna link down below in the comments, the list of tools that I still swear by you know i kind of give a list of what i bought initially and then i say okay should you have should i have actually bought that should you buy that and sometimes it's like yeah and other times it's like eh, you know um unfortunately most of the tooling that i bought i bought from a company that is now gone so you're gonna have to find the same product somewhere else um, but still my suggestions I think hold true. Uh, now the other thing to consider is I'm trying to slowly build videos for each of these. So some of them have videos as to here's how to use this thing. So that's something else. If you guys find that any value in that, just feel free to use it. But anyways, when it comes to tooling, I think uh, there are certain things you need that are really handy and you'll use uh, all the time. You know, one of these, for example. Um, and there are things that you're, you know, people are swearing you need that you don't need. You know, I think a primary example of that was, it was a, um, a drill press. You know, it came up about a drill press. Oh, you have to have a drill press. I've never had a drill press out here. Uh, in fact, I can think of, in fact, I can't think of a time when I actually like desperately needed one. Now, would it, be handy at some point? Possibly. I mean, it's a drill press. They're useful. But I have drills. In fact, I have several. Um, so I don't know that you need a drill press. I mean, uh, and it's extra money you're spending. And, I, and that's that's really what it comes down to. You know, if you're just going to spend a hundred bucks on the Home Depot drill press, you know, the El Cheapo drill press, you can do that. Or you can spend, I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars on a drill press if you really need something like that. But for this project, I just don't see that you need one, and that's money that's better spent somewhere else. Uh, the, I'm trying to think, the three pieces of hardware that you absolutely need. Um, compressor. Bandsaw. I'm trying to think if, if there's anything else. Um, disc grinder. I really think that's it. A good drill goes a long way too. So I've talked about this before. You want to get a good compressor. And when I say good, I don't necessarily mean a super high dollar one. I mean a high capacity one. You know, and, and, and now again, don't go out and buy a 10,000 gallon monster of a compressor because I said so. But what I'm saying is you want to get one that isn't constantly running. Um, if you are doing a lot of bucking, or especially if you are planning to use a pneumatic drill as opposed to an electric drill, you're going to want to get a compressor that has quite a bit of space in it. Um, you know, quite a bit of capacity. Because otherwise what happens is, especially if you use those little teeny, you've all seen them, the little flat compressed, I call them pancake compressors, but I don't know if that's actually the correct term, but they're, you know, they're two gallons, maybe one gallon. I've seen them smaller than that. This will starve that within about three seconds. And then this will just slow down to nothing and your compressor is going to be running forever. You know, I have a larger compressor and this is still too, uh, too much for my compressor, I feel. So that's why I use an electric drill. And honestly, I think the electric drill works just fine. Um, 
And the other thing is you can spend a lot of money on pneumatic tools. So, whereas, you know, my electric drill I've had since 1995, you know, it still works fine, so. And I went out and got a, a, a really super cheap, you know, drill like this one. I wouldn't recommend this one, but this is like meant for house duty, not quite this. Uh, but you know, this works. I do a lot of the playing with this. The biggest problem I have with this one is this, this chuck is pain in the ass to tighten. It, this is a bad design, but you know, there are other designs that are far better that are just much more functional and that you could work with forever. And you're not having to buy both a high dollar pneumatic, which this is not thankfully, and a large capacity compressor. So that's one thing I would say though, you're going to need a good compressor capacity wise that Husky that I have works just fine. So that's one I think you definitely need. You're going to need a bucking system of some sort to do rivets. Um, highly recommend a squeezer as well. Something that can do lots and lots of rivets over time. And with, you're gonna need three or four different yokes for it. I have those listed in the, in the spreadsheet down below. Again, you get what you pay for. And this is probably one of the more expensive tools. I think this was several, this was a lot. This was not cheap but I use the heck out of it. And it's just, it's great. This is a great tool. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, when I'm done with this, I'll put it on eBay and sell it for probably half at least what I got, you know, what, what I got in it. So you're going to need that again, though. It, you don't need, you don't need this, I guess is the right word, but it really makes your life easier. So this is one I would recommend. Um, bandsaw. This bandsaw works fine. This is a Ryobi bandsaw. It was like $99, $98 or whatever at the big box store. My only complaint about it is the throw here is not very big, but I mean, it works just fine. I don't need anything bigger. I have a much bigger full-size bandsaw at the house for doing all of my woodworking. It's a, you know, very expensive bandsaw compared to this thing. And that thing would be overkill. I don't need that here. You know, this works fine. So get you one of these, get a couple blades for it, and you're gonna be good to go. And I've talked about this in a previous video. You are going to use blades. Um, so be prepared to buy a couple extra blades because at one point I remember I was, it got to a point where I was basically burning through, pro, through, through aluminum. And then when I replaced the braid, blade, it went, whoop, you know, right through. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, cause it, you know, it was so dull. I just didn't notice. Um, and then of course the grinder, the disc grinder, you're going to use the hell out of that too. So that's when all you're deburring, I come over here, but you know, uh, they were talking about a lot of other stuff that I just don't think you need. So. I'm willing to answer questions. If you guys have any questions about what products or what tooling you think you might need, ask me down below. I'll happily answer if I think you need one or check out that spreadsheet, like I said. Um, I try to detail what I have. And if you guys have any questions about that spreadsheet and it's something I feel other people want to do, I'll put the question and answer in the spreadsheet. So at least, you know, you guys, we're all sharing information. So anyways, thought I'd answer some of that. There's a lot of misinformation I feel about what you need in order to uh, make this work. There are things you need. There are things you don't need. So yeah, I can talk about this forever. Anyways, I'm going to get back in. I'm going to get some parts and I'm going to get back to putting this plane together. Hi hey guys. All right. So I am going through and you know, another day, another dollar going through and putting, um, Nut plates, nut plates on this guy. So this guy has two nut plates going on top right up here where my fingers are. Gonna do that right quick. And uh, I thought I would test out some new camera settings. So this is the same camera I've been using forever. It's a little GoPro Hero Session is what it is, what this camera is. And I've got a GoPro 9 on the way. I figured it's been a while, it's time to go ahead and upgrade to the latest and greatest. Uh, oh, I need Clico. So that's coming, but I thought I would futz with uh, what, what it looks like. So if it looks, the colors and whatnot look different, it's me, I did that, sorry. <laughs> Trying to step up my game and make this stuff look cool. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if cool is something I can ever claim to be, but yeah. All right. All right, all right. Oh, you know what? I need to widen that hole. That's gonna need to be widened. Every once in a while when you do these nut plates, so you know, you put the nut plate on the bottom and usually it'll tell you to, to size up the hole, but sometimes if you look down, like 
look down the hole to where the the nut plate is on the back end the the skin kind of does get in the way a little bit and so what i'll do in those cases is i'll actually make this hole the the hole that the nut goes through slightly bigger um it doesn't hurt it to make it slightly bigger and it makes it so that when you put the nut in it clears the metal and bites on the nut plate behind it uh, it doesn't take much for it to get in the way so i'm going to do that right quick do that right quick not a big deal So one of the questions I've got a couple times recently actually had to do with the RV-12, and that's with whether or not it would be possible to build an RV-12 using flush rivets instead of pull rivets or pop rivets or blind rivets, whatever you want to call them. Um, yes, of course it's possible. It would add a lot of time to the build. I mean, suddenly you'd have to go through and do all the dimpling and clean up and stuff that you have to do there, both of the ribs and of the skin. So totally possible. But the real question is, would you want to? And the reason I ask that is because with the power plant that you can put on an RV-12, pull rivets, so that little, those little bumps, I mean, it doesn't seem like it would do much, but it actually induces quite a bit of drag on the airplane. Whereas if you did all flush rivets, suddenly all that drag would go away. So you might be able to get well over VNE, that never exceeds speed, in an RV-12 if you were to do all flush riveting. Um, now, I don't know if that's true or not. I know there are other really cool planes um, like the uh, Takano R or whatever it's called. Like that's all... Uh, pull rivets as well like that would be a really cool plane if it were flush riveted but again I don't know if that's a good idea because of the whole VNE thing like you may be able to go way too fast comment down below if you guys know better I, mean, I don't know if that's true or not it may be one of those things that no it's you're never going to even approach VNE but I have to think it would be easier to go maybe a little too fast in that plane if you were to swap all those rivets out for flush rivets so good question that's my guess. Could you do it? Absolutely you could, but do you want to? Maybe, maybe not. All right, guys, it's that time. It's time to put this thing back together, finally, okay? Um, so what I have to do, and this we've done this once before, right? I have to basically bring these two parts together, and the trick is some bits of skin have to go between other bits on other parts, right? So this, for example, this little flappy here has to go between this outer skin and the ribs that are on the inside that you can't see. And the same thing, like these, this skin right here has to go between these ribs and the skin under here. And now the trick is they have dimples. This is gonna suck hard. I mean, it sucked before, but it's gonna be really bad this time. So I'm gonna bring these things together, gonna to make it happen. It's probably gonna take a while, so last time, I forget how long it took, it took a while, because it was, it was pretty hard. Uh, this is one of those things you really should have two people, it's only me, I'll, I'll get it done, but, so it takes a little extra time, because it's just one person. But I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna move the camera out of the way, I'm gonna get together, I'm gonna get after it, and we're gonna make this happen, and hopefully this is the last damn time I have to put this together and take it apart. So, oh, baby steps. All right, here we go. All right, this side, good to go. This side, less good to go. Um, you can see here this, this area right here, I'm just having a hard time with, with all the dimpling. I've got to kind of lift this up a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna put some stuff under here in a sec and just kind of walk it in, shoehorn it in. There's a couple ribs that are kind of getting in the way. Plus with the, the binding that is caused by those dimples, it's just, it's not super happy. So it's just a matter of shoehorning and, and continuing to kind of jiggle it in until it gets there. It's a pain in the ass, I'll get it. Not before too long I'll have it, but uh, been out here for a while working on it. This sucks. Um, so yeah, working on that, gonna get that in here shortly and then we're riveting. <laughs> yes, the trick is leverage. Okay, we are together. Um, I'm now going to put Clecos in. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of Clecos to finalize, making sure everything is lined up. And then 
once I get everything happy, I'll do like I did before, take this off to make sure it's kind of sitting where it's gonna sit, let it let the weight kind of hold itself so it knows, and then rivet. But first, we gotta put some Clecos in. This thing, happy. So, yeah. Sweet, these just go right in here like, but, oh. Yeah, because I'm missing. That's why they go in around better, I'm missing the damn rib. <laughs> oops. I was like, man, these go in easy. Y'all hear that? That's a guy riding around the pattern in his beautiful, beautiful barren. I can't wait to do that. Just to do loops in the pattern just because it is a beautiful, like almost windless day. I won't be out doing that. Uh, no, I'm in here clicoing. All right, more cle more clicos. Looking good, brother. So right here in this next little bit, you'll see the color is completely different than the rest of the footage. And that's because uh, I've got my Hero 9 in and am using that here. Uh, and I terrible, I'm terrible at color correction, partly because I, I have some color blindness that I have to deal with, but also it's just, I just don't fully understand the process. <laughs> so some of the colors may be a little wonky or a little off. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, so um, I'm on to riveting. So here we are, we've got all, all of our Clecos in and I'm ready to go through and do the riveting process. Um, the first thing I'm riveting is basically all of the skins to the ribs that are here. So I'm not doing any of these yet or any of these other ones here, just this line all the way around the bottom of the plane. And as you might imagine, over in there, I'm gonna have to get my wife to come out and help. Uh, there's just no way I can do it. Sometimes I can kind of manhandle it by putting my arms around it, but this one, uh, I don't think so. Uh, there is three on the very top on both sides that you don't rivet. Uh, you're not going to rivet those because, well, the skin goes here and those are part of that. And this top skin is added at a much later step when you start to do the rest of the top of the plane. So uh, again, these are going to sit up here and not do anything. So I'm going to get my bucking bar out, get my step so I can step up in here and, and, and start working on these and start doing, start doing the riveting. Um, looking forward to it. This is awesome. And just like that, guys, uh, that's where I'm going to bring this one to an end. I really appreciate you coming and hanging out with me here today. Um, so uh, this was interesting. Putting, putting the two pieces together for the final time was really cool. I'm glad I got it done. I'm still in the process of going through and putting all the rivets in, as you can imagine. Uh, it's going to take a long time. And uh, like I said, I'm definitely going to have to get my wife to come out and help with some of it because I just can't do all of it. But that's okay. The wives are four, right? No. <laughs> uh, so anyways, thank y'all so very much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Um, if you do me a favor and hit like and subscribe down there, it does help the numbers. Comment down below if you would. It also helps the YouTube algorithm, if you will. And if you really like what I'm doing on this channel for as little as a dollar a month, if you jump, jump over to my Patreon page, you guys can help me afford this. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. Uh, that's my usual spiel. And then the other thing I always say is, if you guys want to build your own plane, if you if you use my builder numbers, when you buy your RV3, RV14, RV10, whatever you want to get, uh, Van sends me 100 bucks. It's no money out of your pocket. You guys can do this. Um, I think that was one of the big things that in the video that you guys are going to see here soon uh, regarding the round table that I advertise, you're gonna see us all talk about the same thing. The most common question we get all the time is, oh, I don't know if I can do it. You can, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, I'm nobody special, guys. So anyways, thanks a bunch. I'll see you next time.